Do you know what it's like to be on the bill and to play for 15 minutes and the only people there to see you are the other bands and their girlfriends? From Buffalo, New York, where we admit Canada is just like us, but we hate them. It's the Struggle is Real Buffalo Music Podcast. Welcome to the Struggle is Real Buffalo Music Podcast, where we talk about the ups, downs, lefts, rights, and promoter vultures of the Buffalo music scene. My name is Ryan Garnett, and we're here to tell you that the voting for the All WNY Music Awards had problems with their voting app. Yeah, and I'm Kevin Kaufman. We, uh, we re-caucused, and uh, it turns out that uh, I won every single award. <laughs> Every award? Every single, all of them. Yes. So we thank you all re- for your right and Real votes. Movement slash Kevin Kaufman. Thank you for uh, a big year in 2019. Just <laughs> coming out of nowhere. Wasn't uh, even on the ballot. Weren't even nominated. I didn't even nominate myself. <laughs> <laughs> on today's episode, we'll be talking to Chris and Mo from Alt Rock Band of the Eves. We will talk about their acclaimed album, Learning to Live in the Dark, uh, and their new upcoming album, which is being recorded at GCR and uh, being produced by Mr. Robbie Takak. Uh, we're also going to be playing some music by the Eves, and we also have new tunes from Stress Dolls, Ashford, and Olmstead. But first, what do we got? Something big. I am very happy to announce that Struggling Productions is going to be working with a new uh, venue called The Stage. Uh, The Stage is located near the corner of Maine and Transit. I believe it's on the Williamsville-Clarence border. Uh, For those who've been around the scene for a while, uh, it was previously Club Infinity. Oh, yeah. It was Howdy's. uh, I think it was about three other country bars, probably. Okay. I didn't know about those other ones you mentioned were before my time. It was definitely the word Nashville on the building when when, when they bought it. So I don't know what was there last. Um, So, yeah, it fits. It's going to open February 21st. um, And they're doing tribute acts. They're doing country acts. And I'm going to be bringing in some uh, touring rock bands and i'm going to be finding local acts to support the touring acts yeah which i think is really important um when we talked about bands drawing in the area i made it clear that you know you're not going to draw buffalo fans to a show in clarence where they have to drive half an hour and they can see the same bands and it might even cost more Mm -hmm. so i made it clear to them that you know what we need to do is we need to get the people of clarence in front of them and if that means getting a touring band and then doing that we can help build these bands up and then you know we don't then then we don't need the touring bands we just have these local bands who can give us great shows there you go build fan bases and make some money sure so um So uh, we have Local Music Tuesdays. Um, They are going to start February 25th. Uh, If you go to uh, the Struggling Productions uh, Facebook page, which is just Struggling Productions, um, you can check them out there. Uh, Our first night is, the 25th is going to be all, uh, it's like folk and acoustic acts. It's featuring Stress stress Dolls and uh, Nicotine Jones and Christina Stock and some other acts. Our second night is a rock show, and that's going to be March 3rd, featuring the Scarecrow Show, Dreadnecks, uh, Eleni and the Uprising, This, Scathed, and, oh, one more band. I can't remember who the one more band is. I apologize to the one more band. Um, and then well, we, you, get, you get a mystery band thrown in there. How, yeah. cool, how cool is that? Uh, then, then on the 17th, we're having a St. Saint, Saint Patrick's Day party. Um, we've got Moxie Cleveland Cabaret, who does, uh, it's kind of a cabaret burlesque act that has... Uh, pop punk songs performed in like folk and acoustic ways that sounds entertaining and then we also have yellow jack featuring former struggle is real host dennis reed uh the project is typically kind of like 1920s spirituals like old like erie canal kind of songs and songs about the history of buffalo for saint patty's day they're going to be doing that they're also going to be doing a whole bunch of their own little irish stuff as well um i'm hoping there'll be some more stuff announced uh that in the near future i'm just waiting to hear back i'm yeah. i'm assuming saint patrick's day has extra hours but they haven't you know, we need some more songs about canals. There's, I only remember the one, and I just feel like there could be so much more canal song out there. Oh, how about a real movement concept album? <laughs> if there's any band that's going to make it happen, it, 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 it'll be real movement. Real movement is water and canals. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's all there. 
<laughs> so eventually we're going to be bringing in the touring acts. Um, if you're listening right now, here, I'll do it over again. Eventually, we're going to be bringing in, uh, I'll be bringing in touring acts in addition to the ones that are already going to be coming in. Um, if there is someone you would like to see come to town that's not, you know, Taylor Swift, like, sure. within reason, guys, yeah. uh, let us know who you want to hear and who you'd like to see come to town, and hopefully I can make it happen. I want to... That's pretty cool. You know, I'm really interested in bringing bands here that just haven't played Buffalo before. Yeah. Like, uh, Always is a really great band okay. that I like. Yeah. But I don't think they've played any closer than, like, kind of the St. Catharines area, or, like, Goldfinger hasn't been here in years and years and years. So um, I'm just going to look into kind of that stuff I like, and okay. I always book the acts I, I like so I'm going to keep doing that and that seems to work so far like like what if I threw out a name like The National do you think that's realistic ooh I feel like they'd be too expensive too expensive okay yeah I haven't it, like at some point I'm actually getting access to like the Polestar website that actually has the prices and I can't wait to see what is within like I, I have a pr- I have more of a budget than I ever thought I'd have so I love this insider info so I can't this wait to good. see like yeah. what all these prices are going to look like because oh the ones I'm looking at are like I can put on a really cool show for like 10 grand yeah so I can sell you know 100 tickets for 1000 tickets for 10 bucks yeah I can do that so um, this is a brand new release. Um, it is from Stress Dolls. I love if, you, if, you, if you've listened to the podcast. I love Stress Dolls. Uh, Chelsea has such a, a an interesting voice, and um, you kind of knowing her personally, and kind of knowing where her songs come from, they speak to me a bit. So um, this is her newest song. Uh, I think it was just released two or three weeks ago. It is called Nashville, and uh, yeah, here on the Struggle Is Real Buffalo Music Podcast on AllWNY.com. <laughs>
here on the Struggles Real Buffalo Music Podcast. That was Nashville by Stress Dolls. I love that song already, and I can't wait to listen to it a hundred more times. So, um, we are going to talk about some previous shows. I keep forgetting we don't have drops for these things yet. We are in the future. I swear I have an intern working on it. All right, so, um... On January 11th, we had my birthday show at Milky's. Um, Nicotine Jones, Tooth, The Scarecrow Show, Dreadnecks, This, and Type Relevant performed. Um, man, I love those guys. Was it a happy birthday? It was a happy birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, Nicotine Jones, um, in addition, I love his music to start with, but he played uh, he played Railroad Man by The Eels, which is one of my like all-time favorite songs. It's something I've always wanted to cover myself, and he did it a billion times better than I could. Um, Tooth played. Uh, if you haven't ca- caught them, they're kind of a aggressive, jammy rock band. Um, I'm really into their sound. I, yeah, I saw Tooth at Tudor Lounge one time uh, when I was going to see Tortoise Horse. There was this other band, and I kept asking, uh, what is the name of this band? And they kept saying Tooth, but I, I just didn't... I couldn't hear it as a band name. I was like, wait, what? It's a, well, what it's are you a, saying? It's all in caps, if that helps. Mm, okay. Uh, and we also had the Scarecrow Show, Dreadnecks, this, and Type Relevant. Um, it was a packed bill. I actually got asked late by the Dreadnecks if they could join on, and I'm like, I don't know if there's time. And then uh, their bassist, Nick Myers, was like, it's my birthday, too. And I'm like, well, shit, I can't say no to that. Yep. So uh, the, the Scarecrow Show was phenomenal, as always. Super high energy show. Uh, ben was all over the place. You can find videos of me and and Ben making chaos with Ooh. at one point we played the bass with four hands and it was pretty fun um Dreadnecks I hadn't really seen one of their shows I've had them on bills I've done but I haven't really seen them and the one time I really the one time I kind of got a look at them was at Mohawk Place and they are so much better at a place like Milky's where it's got that small rise on the stage where like Grant can get right in the crowd with just minimal effort yeah. and they can be right on top of the fans and they were so much fun so they were rowdy oh yeah yeah it was like yeah it felt like like a night of WWE was going to break out or something there were people sitting on each other and people riding on shoulders and grant swings around the washboard uh, around his neck okay like he's head banging he's playing washboard while he's up there he plays washboard what yes that's crazy he was this is a punk band right uh they're they actually fit more into metal okay I call it... Uh, oh, so even more of a washboard type I call genre. it, like, country <laughs> punk swamp rock. Okay. All right. That's that, that. That's how I see it. But there are... There's a lot of, like, metal guitars in there. So. Gotcha. Okay. But um, it was, it was a, like... It was a ton of fun. Like, I would... I'd recommend them for any kind of small venue like that where it can be intimate and they can be just on top of you. And they're, they're like, the nicest guys. Um, this played. This has a new drummer. I believe his name is Spencer. I apologize if I get that wrong. It was cool. I think he's the best drummer I've seen them with, which is cool because I've seen, I've seen this with like I think at least four different drummers and the drum machine now. What kind of music does this play? This, um, hmm. this is a punk band with two basses and a drummer. Um, and then Type Relevant fi- uh, finished up. They were cool as, as well. Uh, three-piece hip-hop group, live guitars and uh, drums, and uh, Mr. Shut Eyes rapping. So, great night. Everyone had a blast. Then on January 24th at the Buffalo Niagara Hostel, we had, Mu- we had Muddle, Gunther's Radio, Sheridan, Al- and Eleni and the Uprising. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to do any more shows at the hostel, just with all the other stuff going on. However... Um, it was so awesome seeing like the under 21 people being able to come out and enjoy themselves at a show like that. And we made over $100 at the door. And um, so I think I'm going to keep doing it. So the next one's going to be on April 4th. We're bringing Muddle back. We're bringing Muddle and Gunther's Radio back. Um, if you haven't checked out Gunther's Radio, um, these guys are, are criminally under uh under followed online right now like literally like like i'm I'm gonna i'm gonna find their address so i can share it with you unless they may not have one of those those urls that you actually customize you know i'm talking about uh for which platform for facebook yeah yeah facebook's a little bit easier like if you don't customize the url it's like your name but with like dashes between the words and like a long number at the end so see yeah so so gunther's radio didn't do this so i can't tell you what their address is because it's it's gunther's dash radio dash three two nine one four seven four two zero nine three six six four oh so just try searching for gunther's radio they're a really cool rock band uh 
they're they're uh, aggressive, they're fun, they're real nice guys. I think they're charismatic on stage. Uh, they have 33 likes on Facebook, and that is fucking criminal. And they're also named after a sled 33 hill. 33 likes? 33. Like, well, that means they just didn't send the invites out to their their friend list, you know? It's Maybe nece- that's true. It's necessary evil. I, I can vouch for this because I just went through this with Pompous Rat. Oh, it works. I, like, put out a video, and uh, then we got, like, 50 likes in one day. I was like, man, that video really killed it. And then Dean, uh, our drummer, said, hey, just so you know, I just invited everyone on my yep. friend list. And I was like, oh, that's what it was for. <laughs> okay. But, uh, cool. uh, like, check them out. Um, they're all, I think, 18, 19. They're... Still high school, college. Okay. Uh, we had Sheridan play. They were winners of uh, Best Local Song for the LWNY Music Awards. They were a great jam band. Someone told me that they were an under-21 band, which is why I had them on that hostel show. Oh. And then I found out they weren't, and it was like, well, okay. <laughs> and they were still great. How is the dog finding the one squeak toy after I hit all of them? <laughs> you can't keep a dog away from its T-Rex, as they say uh, in the Bible. That's what they say? That is exactly what they say. <laughs> and then uh, I played with Eleni in the Uprising. We, we had a really fun time. And uh, uh, just big thanks to JP over at the hostel. Uh, our next show is going to be on April 4th. Um, it's going to include Muddle and Gunther's Radio again. Uh, we we like them so much we invited them back. And then it's also going to have uh, Different Districts, which is a brand new band. They're all like 16 years old. Um, I haven't heard any of their stuff yet. They were recommended to me by a friend who's also managing them, so I'm really excited to see what that's going to be about. And then we have uh, the same Sun, which is not an under 21 band, but I like not having. I like having one. That's okay. Kind of, one band of adults, if you will. We need to give them something to strive like for. Like a nice, oh, it's okay. just like a cool headliner at the if, top. If and if I got you kept same, going. This is what you could be. Yeah, and I so I got same Sun. Um, same Sun is a local. Oh boy. They can get like real hardcore punk, almost like uh, like the band H two O back in the nineties. You, you don't know. Not familiar. About. Yeah, yeah. I, I figured. But then they also kind of have a ska side that almost has kind of like a three eleven vibe to it. I like three eleven. So it really goes back and forth. Um, I saw them at Tudor Lounge a couple months ago. I think they put on a really interesting act. So that'll be happening there. So, Exciting. but yeah, there was a great show. And then um, you saw a new band. On January 31st at Nietzsche's. I did, I did. So um, I, I'm in a, a Modest Mouse cover band called Pompous Rat, and uh, we played at Nietzsche's January 31st last Friday, and um, we had this band open for us. We were we actually tried a bunch of different bands. Uh, we got a lot of no's, and um, Nietzsche's reached out to this band Olmstead. Really? You yeah. got a lot of no's? We did, yeah. Yeah, it just didn't work out scheduling for a lot of our, our friends, <sighs> and... Um, so then um, Nietzsche's agreed to go find this band, and uh, they got Olmstead, and it's, it was their very first show, um, and I loved them. I really liked them. I didn't get to watch all their set because we were busy um, setting up and getting ready, um, but I was able to listen to their music. They have uh, two songs on Spotify, and um, today I had it on in the car, and I could not stop listening. I just had the two songs on repeat nice. uh, for like all my day today while I was doing errands. And um, So what do they sound like? Really Good stuff. I mean, we're going to listen to them in a second, but yeah, like, so, tell me what you think. Um, so they started off, those two singles um, are the two songs they have on Spotify. Um, they have a very stripped down indie dream pop sound. Ooh, um, yeah. I like that. They really hit an indie pop sweet spot because they kind of, they kind of remind me of Beach House with some of the instrumentation, very dreamy and like, you know, just that kind of vibe. And then they also, but they also have great melodies, like these quirky indie melodies kind of like Bell and Sebastian oh I love Bell and Sebastian yeah I hear Deer Hunter um, Atlas Sound kind of influence because they get a little spacey and experimental at times their song structures are uh, very uh, unique and um and so it's cool. Nate Miller is the guitarist and singer. Uh, he was formerly in the band Halo Nelly. Mm-hmm. And then Lydia Beinhauer, she's the bassist, and she also sings a lot of songs. And I talked to her after the show, and she said that was her first time performing on stage ever. Oh, my God. That's fantastic. She was not a performer. And she was amazing. I huh. could have fooled me. She, um, they Sounds kinda, like we might have to have her on the podcast. Yeah. And then so they've also added a drummer. So he's not on the recordings, but uh, they do now have him at the live show, and his name is Paul Luisi. And um, 
You know, I th- I think Lydia Nate. One of the vibes I got was like an M Ward Zoe Deschanel when Ooh, they do She and Him. Yeah, they kind of had that. I mean, a little. You know, they're their own thing. They are a very unique band, um, uh. and they have a very unique social media presence. So if you're on Instagram, you should follow Olmstead Band. That's O L M S T E D band yes i'm and gonna i'm gonna I've do it right now thoroughly enjoyed them so i'm really glad that we Literally. got to play that show and um right now we hope to work with them again olmstead named after the great frederick law olmstead designer of many <clears throat> many parks many parks in many cities across this country that's that's fine Cool. It's fine country. <laughs> Just fine. Not great. Awesome. Well, I actually haven't heard them yet, and um, we're going to pipe in the music later, so I don't get to hear them now. But I'm going to listen soon, and uh, that sounds fucking awesome. And, uh, yeah, let's listen to some Olmstead. Uh, this is The Storm by Olmstead here on the Struggle is Real Buffalo Music Podcast on allwny.com. <laughs>
and we are back on the Struggle is Real Buffalo Music Podcast on allwny.com. That was The Storm by Olmstead, a brand new band who you should check out. We are now joined by one of my favorite Buffalo bands. We have Chris and Mo from The Eaves. Hey, guys. Howdy. How's it going? Thanks for coming and hanging out. I've been wanting to get you guys in here for a while. Uh, Thanks for having us. Yeah, no problem. So, um... You guys have been playing around Buffalo for a while. When did kind of the first bit of the eaves start to form, you think? Does it go all the way back to, like, high school? Like, are you going back that far? Or? Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, the biggest thing was always our chemistry together. So, like, if, if you're going off that, then, yeah, it definitely goes back to, you know, we've... If, you know, friends first kind of thing. If um, you're, you guys are friends in high school and you kind of play around music together, how does that turn into the eaves? Well, in high school, the whole thing kind of was I wanted to keep playing music in a pretty serious way. Chris was a, the best drummer in our high school, and uh, he kind of had that pressure from his parents to uh, focus on studies. So it never came together then. But I never stopped playing, and he fell back in love with music and kind of reached out to me and was saying, how do I do this? Hmm. And I weirdly found myself bandless at a time, and I was like, well, I'm totally down to help you because I believed in the songs he showed me and the mindset he was coming from. It almost gave me, like, a second wind because I was pretty defeated at that time. What, what, what bands were you coming out of? Um, I was in a bunch of bands. It started with uh, this band Jettison and then this other band Crush the Everlasting and then after that Sleepy Ha Ha's was a band I was in which is where our drummer now comes from hmm. um, but yeah w- I was looking for something at the time and he reached out at the perfect time and it just kind of connected and went from there nice yeah and Mo has a way better mem- memory than I do <laughs> like right off the bat um, but yeah I do remember um, I was just like I was just, like, desperate. I had, like, no... I had, like, a couple loose, like, contacts of, like, people that I had met that, like, weren't, like, Mo and Adam. And, um... It just, like, didn't really go anywhere. Um, whatever I would, like, try to get together. And, um... Like, I, like Mo said, like, I just hit him up and I was just kind of, like... Just, like, anything. Like, hey, sure. man, like, I haven't seen you in a while. Like, how's it going? Like, what have you been up to? Like, how's, how has, like, it been for you kind of thing? So and this time around, you weren't even expecting necessarily anything? No, that was or, just, like, there was, like, an initial, like, reach out, like, you know, years after we had, like, seen each other, like, after we graduated high school. And um, he, uh, you know, we just, like, met up one time, and... Um, it was maybe a little while after that, like Mo said, like once he like kind of found himself in a situation where he had a little um, freedom to kind of like what his next project was going to be. Sure. Um, so, you know, right place, right time kind of thing. It's like also, it's a cool thing to find someone that's influenced by a lot of the same people as yourself. And oh, yeah, can absolutely. Al- can also like show you some new things that maybe you missed along the way. And I think we kind of both did that for each other and you know it was a cool thing totally at that time it's a good way to grow it's better to have people with varied interests than just being in an echo chamber where you just listen to one thing yeah and then you're like hey your band sounds like metallica and they're like we all listen to metallica and i'm like that's not an excuse (laughs) um i don't know why i went off on a tangent like that um so the stuff you originally sent mo was that like did any was any of that stuff kind of the stuff that ended up on the first album at all um, or, like, were you working on, like, some of the stuff that ended up there before you got together with the rest of the guys, or did that kind of all, all come together once you a, started? Uh, there's a whole band before that album came out. Uh-huh. We were in a band together called 60s Future, which okay. featured, like, a lot of the same members, um, minus an organ, plus the guitarist in the eaves now. Which organ? <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was... Very heavy Americana influence, and mm-hmm. by the time the Eves came around, I mean that's where the record is now, our first record. But yeah, I mean Sixty Future, we had kind of had that was that was where we just first came together, like at, mm-hmm. and you know we were just it was just Mo, Adam, uh, and I at 
mow at Adam's apartment, and you know, just on Saturdays or you know, whenever we could get in there, and just kind of screwing around with the an acoustic and like ideas for writing, and um, not sure what we were gonna do with it, and we kind of had we went through and recorded um, the uh, these four songs that we had um, with. It was the you know the first time I had met Jay Zubricki, who we ended up you know we've been working with since. Oh, you're so lucky! He's awesome. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah seriously. Um, he, he yeah, he's great. I'm, I, sure, I'm, I'm sure like, I'm sure we'll talk more. As about you him. say that, I'm like writing his name down. He is yeah. used to be on this podcast next. Oh yeah, totally. He's yeah, Jay's, so much cool stuff. Yeah, he's uh, he's the man. The '60s future stuff was kind of us figuring out how to like work together. Yeah, sure. and then. We, the, we, the eaves is like us finding our sound. Yeah. It's how we sure. kind of look at it, you know. So sixties future. That's what. What was it called? Yeah, sixties yeah. future. Yep. So it did it, it did it sound like the eaves in any way, or just it? Uh, a little bit. Um, it, we kind of uh, the. I guess the biggest thing is the Americana. How much we we really yeah. dialed down. Like now the Americana. Influence, sorry, is uh, shaking the <laughs> table here. Yeah. Um, the Americana influence is dialed down where it's more like a maybe a structural thing okay. than it is a sonic yeah. thing or, or, or an instrumentation. Like, uh, like we still use cowboy chords in, in a lot of our songs, but it's in a more aggressive way. So like the way before it was all Springsteen, Petty influence and stuff. Okay. Yeah, very, very. And the now it's kind of like two steps away from that because we get that through the bands like the replacements and stuff that they are obviously influenced by Tom Petty whether they would say that or not oh but, absolutely yeah but we kind of like so it's filtered through that kind of that. so we still have that Americana influence it's just not as on the nose as it was in 60s future so I feel like this is kind of like leading right into the eaves because um, we kind of had you know we were going we were leaning in we really really liked Lucero Mm-hmm. Um, and like in like even like as the eaves, we got to do an acoustic gig opening for uh, Ben Nichols, which was you know I mean, definitely one of the personal high points oh, of the sure. for me. And um, we were super influenced by them, like almost to a fault, like mm-hmm. or like bands of that style. And um, what, when what we had the first four, we did it. The first four e- uh, songs that were on an EP at Sixties Future. We did a second four. Um, that were a little more of an Americana, like traditional, like Americana rock band. Yeah. Um, direction, we put out like half of them, and then we really just focused on what we were going to do next. And we kind of had, we were writing all these songs, and we had these producers that we wanted to get in touch with, like potentially to work with. Um, and like obviously, I mean, hey, if, if, if there's going to be any like influence that transferred like band to band, it's, it's probably like Gaslight Anthem. Oh sure. Um, so like you know, we really liked you know some of their records, some of Lucero's records. Um, I mean, even going sorry further back for me, like I used to, like I liked Rocket Murphys when I was like a younger kid. Oh hell yeah! And um, so like we wanted to work with Ted Hutt. Um, so we're like he was one of the lines that we threw out there. We got in touch with him, and so we really kind of. All the focus came into making this record um, wow. with Ted, and we uh, it was kind. Of, it was a very um, it's a big step up from just from how we had been doing things to like oh, bringing in, bringing in. A, I mean, the guys won a Grammy, so it's like a, we're going from like never working with a producer before to now we're working with a guy you know at his level. Absolutely, um, and you know, put out some of the, our favorite records, like some of the, definitely some of our like formative. Um, you know, I mean, how many? There's a lot of kids like my age that like got introduced to Springsteen through uh, Gaslight Anthem. You know, sure. so it's like you know they would they found Gaslight Anthem before they found Springsteen, and then maybe before they found Petty, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so like you know, it's all like a certain age thing. You know? oh, so, so what's I, a, what's the thing that like a producer like that brings? Like, do they have some bit of advice? Like, do they have pressure. tricks and stuff? When a guy like that says he wants to work with you, there's a lot of pressure. Oh my goodness, you know, on yourself to try to bring songs to the table that he likes. You know, right? A lot of the process since he was in LA, and our budget wasn't big enough to have you know a month of pre-production with him here. 
there was us sending songs back and forth for a year before he even came here. Wow. wow. And every time we hit send on a song, it was like, oh, I, I, want so what is, I hope he likes it. I so does he, he come it. back with notes? Does he say yeah, no? I mean, he came like, back what? with a lot of brutal honesty. I mean, Ooh. some about... Hey, sometimes you need it. Yeah. some of he, And a lot of it was at the 11th hour. Yeah. To be, uh, a week before he came here, he's yeah. like, you sound like you're trying to copy something. You don't sound like you're making your own thing. And that really made me buckle down and rewrite all of our songs. Wow. I mean, ultimately, he created a watershed moment for our band. Um, as far as, like, uh, um, reflecting on, okay, what are you actually putting out? Like, who are you? What's authentic? What are you putting out there? You want someone I, to listen to you and say, that's the Eves, not listen to you and say, oh, they sound like... That's the Eves doing their, you know, re- replacements, like... Right, uh, right. And uh, so where did, where did you do the tracking for it? It was GCR? GCR oh, yeah. yeah. You're here with Everything, Breaky, everything's we've done, everything we've done is, has been with Jay at GCR. Cool. Um, I mean, we actually we just, did, just did some new stuff with him, too. Um, oh, I'm going to ask about that in a little bit. All right. <laughs> Jumping the gun. Yeah. Um, so just to talk about your first album before we get into the, 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 the new stuff, uh, what is... What does learning to live in the dark kind of mean to you, that phrase? Like, it kind of seems to be what the whole album centered around, and you've got the track. Like, what is that? Um, Dissect a little here for me. I want to yeah. dig in on this one. Um, well, I mean, definitely as a... As a um, all the songs are like, especially with like the emphasis and the uh, sort of recalibration that Ted brought, and Ted brought with the approach with this record... Um, you know, and he brought it. You know, it was it was a kind of a crash course in you know sort of looking in the mirror. Like, pardon the cliche yeah, no, no, metaphor, it was, but it's um, a great way to put it. It's in every song we have. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, and it, so it was a uh, you know I had a lot going on um, uh, personally. Um, so it was really just you know it was kind of like balancing a lot of things that were going on. Um, and then on top of all that, we're doing this record with, you know, it was just kind of... Almost like living amidst the chaos? Yeah, know. oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I know all about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm always really bad at explaining myself also, especially with songs, me and that kind of thing. Oh, no problem. So, so do you write all the lyrics? Do the guys, the rest of the band chime in at all? Um, yeah, for the moment, they keep me from writing anything too too hacky. Um, they they will, come up with bits thank God. here and there. The... Sure. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sometimes sometimes enough is all you need. Oh yeah. So, uh, w- what are your favorite venues to play in Buffalo? Um, I mean, definitely Mohawk and Ballroom off the top of you know those are my two oh, major love, reactions. Yeah, I want to yeah. play Ballroom. Um, <laughs> yeah, we we've been lucky enough to play there a few times. It's great. I mean, we just played Riverworks not too long ago, and it was uh, awesome. Oh yeah, uh, especially. With Chris's low vocal, it's it's hard sometimes in some of the places where the sound that was doesn't have that kind of extra headroom, um, and like a place like uh, Riverworks, it's just like oh, the, you get to actually hear what our band sounds like and what it would sound like on record, and you know, yeah, that, yeah. That, no, that that was the, the only negative thing I had to say about you guys. The first time I saw you was I couldn't hear your voice, yeah. at all. Well, Dude, you were laughing before. That's when we got the in ears. <laughs> oh yeah, because that, a lot of it was the feedback we were getting on stage. Yeah. Because like to try and get it on top, you have to, you know, well, the monitors. I, well, I had to hit, get his voice so high in the monitors that our our it was feeding back everything on stage. So with the in ears, it kind of helped us out big time. I love Mohawk Place, but I do have a, a critique that I think they're like they're at like eleven. They just need to be down to ten. Just bring it down to ten a <laughs> yeah, little bit. Yeah. Vocals can hear themselves better. Yeah, I feel that. Like, I, mean, and I, 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 like, I also feel like that's every show I've ever been to. You yeah. know? I think we so, did some record, places are, are decent at it. But. We did our record release at Leopard Lounge, and honestly, like that's a really cool spot. For, Where's the Leopard Lounge? That's inside Ballroom. It's the, it's the oh. room off to the side. And that's like a really cool spot. S- they do. I've it's like professional. That. It's cool. I mean, I really just saw today they announced a Raina Kendo show there, which is like wow. I mean, for, right, they would usually play the main room, I feel. So yeah. like for them to do a Leopard Lounge show, uh, it's probably so loud at this point. <laughs> <It's awesome. laughs> Rumor has it you're working on a new album with Robbie Takek at GCR. Can you def- confirm or deny these allegations? Not a full full length album, but a new EP. 
Cool. Type deal with him. It's all tracked. Pretty much done. So how intensive is, is like, he there, like, every day with you guys? Is he just kind of popping in or, like, hearing the stuff he's, at the end of the he's, night? He's there. It's a total different situation from Ted. Ted was, like, so hands-on. Robbie kind what of... needed at the time. Yeah. Sure. And now Robbie is kind of more of, like, sit back as another maybe member suggesting maybe we shouldn't do this here, maybe we should do this here kind of kind of situation. And Jay gets us and Jay get to do everything with the sounds and stuff like that. Whereas Ted, huh. was, Ted was really involved with like miking and. Oh, everything. you get some of those producers, and they, they yeah. uh, they'll they'll be like, yeah. "Well, we need your fingernails to be this long when yeah. you record this track." Yeah, yeah he, he used to, Ted used to always tell our guitarist like, "Act like you had a couple whiskeys and now hit the chord." It's <laughs> yeah. like okay, and he's like, "But don't have the whiskeys." <laughs> right. I, mean, I mean, it was a lot of course. I know adjustment. exactly what he means though. <laughs> It was a lot of course adjustments that first record, but like we, you know, we learned a ton. Yeah, it was. And working with Robbie has was honestly amazing. Uh, uh, and 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 fit where we the, his approach and his style. Oh, I, I fit better. Like it, it not better, I but it believe fit. That. It yeah. really lined up. Um. You know, as well with with where we were coming from, mm-hmm. and, and as far as confidence and you know how we had reapproached it, and sure, I mean, I just settled. think I think even if I was just going to compare a local rock band to the Goo Goo Dolls, like you know, the vocals aren't quite there, but right now the rest of the stuff that's going on can sound an awful lot like what they were doing. So yeah. when I heard that, I just thought it was it was just like a perfect fit. Like that's the band that should be working with him. Like yeah, and he he even said it was really cool. He just felt like. You know, he wanted to be <laughs> in our band all the time. At that <laughs> point, he laughed a lot during the, those sessions, but that's how it happened. And do yeah. you think? Do you think for this round, um, you know, for the first record, you're you're figuring out that sound, you're piecing it together, you're building it, you're figuring out what it is. Now you have that sound. You've been touring on that sound for quite some time. You know it. You know it well. So when you're coming in the second time, do you feel like you have? Be- that confidence that's allowing you to like get more creative because you know what works for you so well totally um i mean that first um the first like uh when we did the record with ted um like obviously we care a ton of you know we put our heart and souls into this stuff so it's like you know when someone's telling you it's like you say like i mean it's not like these people that are resistant to like change of like yeah. Their persona or their sound, what have you. Um, it's like the, the the producer's not doing it to be a dick. Like right. he's, he knows what he's and doing, it, and it's and it's tough. Yeah. And you know, like especially because you have your heart and soul in this, so it's tough to not take it personally. And it's it's tough to use it to like challenge yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was after that was a really tumultuous. Um, at least personally, like, and internally, like, processing everything when we were making that record, it was a weird thing. So, like, everything, like, basically when we were able to pr- approach this again, it was at this period of, like, after the dust has settled. Yeah. And it's, like, we can kind of, like, all right, let's get our let's get our sea legs back. Like, let's kind of, like, we've made these course adjustments. Like, sound-wise, how does the new stuff compare with the first album? Is it kind of a lot of the the same kind of feel and atmosphere, everything? Is it any great evolution in any great direction, you think? There's no organ. Which yeah, that's the, that, probably the biggest thing sonically. Sonically, that was throughout that whole record. We yeah. Had an organ player, he was in there. It's It's... There's a lot more melodic instrumentation. Uh, the guitars are doing a lot of, like, straightforward... Like angular stuff on the record, um, and the new stuff, the like. Well, we have more leads. It moves a little more. Some catchy leads and stuff in between Chris's vocal things, stuff like that. Yeah, and that, that comes from I think like kind of settling into what, um, what kind like if we're gonna have like any kind of consistent elements, what are they gonna be? Sure. And like you know what's going to define our sound, you know, in as many words. And so, and I think a lot of that boils down, like, it comes back to the chemistry, like... Sure. That, which is the biggest, I always thought was the biggest asset of, or the biggest, like, X factor, whatever it is, of us, you know, you, me, and, and Adam, and, you know, events like Steve and, and, and Louie now um, working together. Um, 
that now we're able to kind of play off off each other and kind of know like what we're we all kind of collectively know what we're going for. Sure. Um, and so kind we, of what the roles are. Kind of. Yeah, thing. we still have the loud guitars. We still keep it straightforward. Yeah. Structures aren't doing anything. We have too a couple crazy. commandments. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But we we also kind of get to the point where it's like in between. You know, a chorus and a verse. I'd like to hear a catchy guitar part and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that, that. That's kind of something that the record doesn't have. The record's like not a lot very of reliant yeah. on the, yeah, very the anti- vocal, yeah, and just pounding through a song, yeah, yeah. In, in a cool way. But we kind of, you know, with that it, organ, I almost felt almost like a gospel-y vibe, you know, mixed with old rock and roll. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was l- like a little bit of soul, soul in there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely one of the. Uh, um, bridging elements I get if, if if there's gonna be a change in the sound it's an, an adjustment to what you're hearing taking out an organ instrumentation because that first album it's really is you're right it's very prominent yeah, yeah. Um, but so I mean I, you know that's definitely gonna be the um, I guess the biggest change um, and then just more of a like you said like angular melodic uh, guitars kind of playing back and forth yeah, um, I got to write cool bass parts because I wasn't worrying about the. Yeah, we we, the we weren't at threat level midnight. Yeah, yeah. that is so, nice. Yeah, um, I've done some recordings myself where it's like you finish it up and then like it's it's down, it's recorded, and then like three weeks later you're like, oh, the bass part would have sound way better if I did this. Right. And then you have like your shitty bass part enshrined forever. At the end of the record, right. I mean, when we did the record with Ted. He flew out and he said to Chris, he's like, I don't even know what we got here. And we all felt that way. We didn't know what we ended with. It, there was no time to process. It was just like do. And, yeah. and like a lot of it kind of relied like it, it kind of uh, it's just shown the light on like the at least for me personally, the best and worst. Like, like, there's some good stuff and there's some totally shitty stuff on that record. You know what I mean? Like, for, as far as like my role in it, I that's what you think. Uh, <laughs> but you know, but like at the same time, like it, it comes down to being able, like, being able to, or like, uh, you know, wanting to have that progression to, to, like, you should be dissatisfied with what you're, like, if oh yeah, I feel like if if you think that you're like really doing a good job, like you're probably, you know, a fucking idiot. That is, <laughs> yeah, that is usually how it like, works. You should, yeah. like, you know, you should, um, you should feel like, like you're progressing. You should feel like you're improving. Always, yeah. I think. So. Yeah, absolutely. All when we all we can ask yeah. of ourselves is to be a little bit better than the day we were before. Well, so, totally. speaking yeah. of progressing, I oh. wanted to ask you, Chris, about. Um, so when I first saw you play music was back in back in high school, Williamsville, <laughs> Williamsville South. I, ha- I had to get my Williamsville shout out in there. <laughs> you were a drummer. Um, when did you start wanting to be a front man of a band? Do was there a moment? Did it go from drums to that, or have you always kind of thought about being a front man, being a singer? No, no, it was always it was always drums, and then uh-huh. like there was like one weird time where we played like this battle of the bands at a church when we were like juniors nice. in high school. Okay, and like what we church? didn't have a singer, you know, church. Yeah, yeah, all right. There, there was no. Um, we didn't have a singer. We had, like, a singer for, like, two of the songs. We had, like, a, right. s- maybe a nine-song set. So I had to sing a couple of them. Absolutely terrified. <laughs> I, and, like, I, I, like, didn't even memorize the words, so I had a lyric sheet. I still were these remember. original songs? No, no, no. They are all covered. Oh, okay. Um, and we were, you know, teenagers. Or yeah. Whatever. And, uh, <laughs> and then, like, I, I really, like, my idea, like, my dream job would have been just to, like, write songs yeah. well, and Chris, have someone else sing them. Chris, okay. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Telling you when, so you like the songwriting part of it. When Chris <laughs> brought well, me, Amy, but now I'm, you know... When well, we I reconnected and Chris sure. brought me the songs, he was singing on them, but he was saying, how do I get someone else to perform <laughs> these songs? Yeah. And I said... You're not gonna. You're gonna sing those. All oh, right, all right. <laughs> and then we figured it out. You know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's amazing. And so one thing I wanted to ask you about because so you know I I play in a band and I'm the lead singer, uh, but usually I have a guitar with me. Mm-hmm. And there have been a few times here or there, usually at open mics or random things, you karaoke, you know, where you just have a mic and just your body up there, and it is a strange, strange thing to do, and sure. to willfully do it every night. Um, I'm just curious, uh, so, and you're talking about you went from, you didn't even want to be up there. Yeah. So now you're up there and you have no shield whatsoever. Right. So how, how did that feel? Did you feel like you started to develop some moves? 
Like, what do you still do? You think from about my, that, or does it just happen? From my point of view, the best thing that ever happened is like what got Chris back into music was falling in love with Bruce Springsteen and seeing his shows. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I think that kind of like gave him like, oh, if I'm gonna be out there, I have to somewhat have a way I am on stage. Yeah, I think that's always yeah. that's always been in him from the very first show. I was worried that he was gonna just freeze up at the first show, <laughs> and and from the first show he kind of had it down of what his style is going to be up there. It was cool. I mean, awesome. my answer was going to be it helps to close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> because, well, like, that's yeah. definitely what I, like, every photo, like, the photos that were taken of that show, my eyes are closed in every single one of them. <laughs> but he's oh, that's why you wear sunglasses on stage. You don't <laughs> yeah. tell when your eyes are closed. He definitely has his own style and mystique, you know, when people see him from the crowd. I think it's, like, I think it all works. It's it's, yeah, yeah, well, so the, the first time I saw you guys was about two years ago at Nietzsche's, and I went with a uh, fellow William Silver musician, Dean Davis, mm. and and I knew you Name were in the band because we practiced at the same recu- uh, practice space, right? And so uh, I was like, oh, this band is great. And the singer, and I didn't know it was you. I did not know it was, <laughs> it was Chris, okay? Yeah. I just thought you were just some random guy. And I liked your vibe. You had a, you reminded me of Michael Stipe from R.E.M. Because he kind of, I watched some old videos of him. He kind of hangs on the mic stand, kind of lurching a little bit. Like you're using like your stiffness to like kind of sway around. It's just insecurity oh, yeah. manifesting the same way it always has. <laughs> yeah, right. You turn it into something. I hope you're my, I, I I hope your Michael Stipe evolves into yeah. uh, what's the frequency Kenneth Michael Stipe. If you've never seen that video, we've he's had, flailing we just, just around. Just saw like a murmur. Crazy. Yeah, we've had yeah. to buy we've had to buy four mic stands because of the way Chris <laughs> is with a mic stand. So. <laughs> yeah. And then I saw a video of you guys from maybe like a year ago, and you and I was really watching because again, I I love I appreciate the performance that people can put on because some, sometimes they, like I have trouble thinking about that, you know. And you kind of got some hands up there. You're bend your knees i mean does do you think about these do you have little moves you go to or is it really all just like you separate you know um you just try to be in the moment and in the in the in the song and what you're saying you know what i mean so it's like i i i i want to ask if this happens to you actually so I sang for a band. I did I once, and I had like the way I was, go- I was doing things at practice down pat. Mm-hmm. And then I got out on stage, and then like everything I had practiced was just out the window. Like, did you have that experience at all, where you kind of knew what you kind of wanted to do when you got up on stage, but like maybe you didn't end up there, or is that just me? You know, no. I well, I mean, one, I I think because I'm not about to take credit for what. Like, I half the reason that I did. Or, I mean, not, not, more than half. Like, the, a lot of my confidence on stage comes from, like, knowing that I'm, you know, Mo, Mo and Adam, who I've known for, you know, 15 years, yeah. 20 years at this point, are right next. Like, I'm one of my best friends. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm home. You know what I mean? So it's like... That's awesome. I'm fine. You know what I mean? So I don't... The there was net. no... Yeah. There, yeah. Was, there wasn't really... That, like, totally hedged a, a ton. And, it, like, it always makes me, like, grateful, like, just to be able to, like, work with them. So it's yeah. like... Um, that always... Hedged and a lot of that and hay burner uh, always hedge, uh, you know, any insecurity that you're about to yeah. think you're about to face. But That's yeah, awesome. and then you just got to trust what you're doing, like, you know, own sure. what you're doing. I think um, a lot of our songs, like, we're big into songwriters that had a lot to say, and Chris has a lot to say in his lyrics. So, a way to, like, get that through on stage is also, like, how he puts it out there in his motions and stuff i think sure that's a cool way to get people to actually listen to what he's saying you know because you can get lost in the loud guitars and whatever yeah but, but if you really listen to what he's saying that's where the special part of our band happens in sure. my opinion you know awesome yeah all right uh we are running out of time uh one one last question what tips do you guys have what what if, if, if you're if you going to recommend to someone just starting off making music in a band, like, what, what, what what's some good Eve's advice? Do you have anything? The room well, gets quiet. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, if, I mean... I mean, if you're coming from... No, if you I'm believe sorry. in it... It's, you give yours and I'll give mine. Well, it's, like, it's, e- it's easier than you think. You know, I run into a lot of people that are like, oh... I just wish I could record a song. Well, it's like you can. If you research it, if you put your time in, you can record a song, and you could do that. If that makes you happy, then do it. You know, um, 
I think someone told me the other day, it's like, you you made an album. Like, how lucky are you? And, like, it's hard for me to look at it that way because it's just us moving forward. But, sure. but at the same time, there's kids that are just wishing, like, oh, I, I wish I could make an album. It's like, you can. Like, it's not that hard. Everyone can, especially in this day and age. Oh, absolutely. With computer programs and anything it's so accessible I mean, shit kevin made an album yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> true i was it's, just thinking that in my head it's, it's so accessible so it's like don't don't be stopped by like in your mind thinking it's out of reach you know i mean that's I so weird that. because that's like you know from somebody who like um i'm, I'm just again going back to like kevin, i'm super grateful and like just to be like working and being able to play shows with you know Guys I've known for so long and I'm, you know, such good friends with. And, um, like, I, there was a point where I couldn't have felt further away from, like, I had fallen out of touch with them and couldn't have felt further away from where I wanted to be. And, uh, you know, I downloaded, like, a couple apps and, like, that's all you need. Like, a couple apps on your sure. phone. Like, if you want to take it, if you want to, if, it, it's, it was always one of those things, like, especially, like, with my parents and everything, every, they weren't, uh, you know, with, with music, it, there's not really a lot of musical people in my family, so it was always like, well, see if you like it, see if you like it. So, like, <laughs> just see if you like it, you know what I mean? Like, see, like, does it, does it make you feel fulfilled? Like, does it give you some sort of satisfaction? And if you like it, follow it, and, you know, now I am, I am lucky enough to, you know, get to play in bands, I mean, made a record with Ted Hutt and like all this like you know the guy who made all these records that we loved and it's only getting know, better yeah made a record with Robbie and uh it's sort of like just allowing yourself to put in work on this I mean that's you the know, other thing with, that, with, with anything in life you gotta stick with if you want anything to come with it you gotta put the time in you gotta stick with it absolutely um, especially like this day and age like everyone you know in my me included my attention span is absolute shit so it's like the notion of sticking with something and like being patient for any type of validation or reward or whatever you want to success, whatever you want to put it, um, which are also things that you should have your own definitions for. Um, yeah. because that's scary to like, I'm going to put in a lot of time on this, but that's, and if it ends up being, there's that fear, right? Well, that's, of, so I guess that's the thing. Like if you, if you start out working with the most, working with an app mm-hmm. and, and an acoustic guitar or whatever, literally like how, yeah. Like when I was just starting making music again, like before I even talked with Mo, you know, like if if you enjoy that, like and that's the other thing, falling in love, like like loving the process of, of oh, anything yeah. you do with life, and like so it's like if you like you know the the times when you're you know eating shit or whatever, like then you're gonna love you know like it's, yeah. that's enough. Like you can laugh at it and go, oh my enough, god, you know like, I mean? that didn't like, work, but I can't wait to find out what does. Yeah, yeah, right. Be excited by it. All right, so uh, we are going to play a song from the album, and we are going to play the title track from the album. Here is Learning to Live in the Dark uh, from the Eves here on the Struggle is Real Buffalo Music Podcast on allwny.com. It's mediocre mayhem, pretend like it's 65, living delusions day to day, spoiled by the hype. I can't stay in the conversation I never learned diplomacy The comedy day to day The punch is killing me When the lights go down and the curtains drop I don't want to struggle to see I need something to believe in
And we are back here on the Struggle is Real Buffalo Music Podcast. That was Learning to Live in the Dark by the Eves. You know, eventually this uh, podcast is going to go to WNYMusic.com. And, you know, I can't afford an ASCAP license. That shit's expensive. I am so horrified after hearing that Unsatisfied was a replacement song, and I didn't figure it out. Yeah. One of my favorite bands that, like, I'm so worried I'm just going to play something copyrighted by, like, complete accident. Yeah. So uh, look for me in an upcoming lawsuit. Yeah, you're going to find out Over and Out really was just doing uh, Talking Heads covers the whole time. Oh, I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, since we don't st- don't have any drops, though, our new uh, intern Max is working on it. Um, upcoming shows. FYI, um, we can now offer internship credits for SUNY Fredonia students. That will be something that we talk about uh, on the next episode. But, uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention that. So, on February 21st, Pocket Vinyl is coming to Milky's. Um, if you folks haven't, they are, they are the band that is talked about the most on this podcast that is not from Buffalo. Um, it is Eric Stevenson playing piano and singing uh, much like Ben Folds, while his wife Elizabeth paints these beautiful, surreal, colorful paintings. We're looking at one of them right now. I have it in my living room, and I'm not going to lie, I'm pro- I plan on, at the, at the end of the set, they auction it off. I plan on getting getting one to match it, to be honest. I hope she does it in the same color scheme so yeah. it ties the room together. So all you listeners out there got to come down and challenge Ryan. I think someone actually knew that I was planning on it and, like, mm-hmm. kept outbidding me to get his oh, hire boy. for the band. He was, like, one of their friends. So I don't know. He probably doesn't listen to this podcast, but I'm on to you. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, um, they're an amazing act live. The way Eric talks about his songs, the way the songs just are themselves is fantastic. And um, they're touring with a full band, which is something they've never... They've done performances with a full band, but they've never actually toured with one. They're only doing two of... uh, It's only doing ten tour stops with the band. So, uh, and we get to do one of them. So we're really happy about that. So they'll be performing straight to VHS. will be performing. They are Pocket Vinyl's backing band. They'll be doing uh, a set themselves. And then we have uh, The Great Mistake uh, featuring uh, staff member Mr. Will Webb. This will be The Great Mistake's last performance as uh, Will uh, gets lost to the plant people every April. Um, We will have Makeout Tactics, which is uh, a great new indie rock group. Um, It reminds me of the new pornographers meets the moldy peaches. There's seven of them. It's a fun time on stage. Um, It's the most party you can have without them being a ska band. Um... That was so lame. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, we, and then, of course, we have the mighty passed out playing on the bill. Yeah, I'm, uh, that's uh, I'm most excited for that because, um, uh, as as much as the pocket vinyl, but passed out. I've been listening to some of their stuff on Spotify. Uh, the song Aimless Endeavor, awesome. You should go look that up on Spotify by Passed Out. But I've never seen them live, so I'd be very curious to see how that translates. Yes, I think that'd be a good uh, good performance. You said their dynamics is really yeah lots of light at shows. Uh, well, what I really noticed is. Like I've seen them at Mohawk and I've seen them at the Hostel and I almost feel like the music they do is not that it's always quiet but it's intimate to a point where it really serves itself better on like a lower stage like like at Mohawk it's one thing at the Hostel though with everyone sitting close when he got to those quiet parts and there wasn't a sound in the room like that's how I feel like that music really should be enjoyed and I think Milky's will be a really great spot for them I haven't seen them at Milky's before but I feel like it's 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 more of a smaller place and they have that lower stage so I think they're gonna I think Andy and the rest of the guys are gonna give a great performance nice so then on February 25th Fifth, uh, we're, we are doing our first show at the stage. Uh, it is uh, at the corner, uh, it's near the corner of Transit and Main Street, right along uh, the Williamsville Clarence border. Um, the, all these Tuesday night things we're doing, which are gonna, they start February 25th. We're gonna do at least five of them, as it looks like right now. Um, they're all gonna go from seven to eleven, with the doors opening at six. They're all gonna cost five dollars. Our first night is a night of folk music with Philip Stephen, Stress Dolls, Christina Stock, Nicotine Jones, and uh, No Time to Think. Um, if you've listened to the podcast, you've heard us talk about uh, Stress Dolls and Christina and Nicotine Jones a lot. Um, Philip Stephen played uh, actually at a show I did uh, that passed out. That was on the bill for um he's a really interesting he's like one of these thinking man singer songwriters but he is like 
there's still enough of a punk enthusiast in there that it almost it's, it's like oh, it might not be folk punk, but it's really really close. Okay. And I love the passion with it, in which he does his music. He's been a part of the scene for like 15 years, and um, he's this this guy should get his due because I think he's doing a really great job. And then no time to think. I actually had someone. Actually, it was an email forwarded me from Nietzsche's, and they're like, they're like, hey, like this guy, you know, you don't get any, into Nietzsche's as your first show. Um, but this guy, uh, Seamus, made music in high school, um, and then you know, college got on the way, and then life gets in the way, et cetera, et cetera. So now, uh, you know, ten years later, he wants to get back involved with music. So he has this project called No Time to Think. See, I like that. Goes back to what we were just talking about with the Eves, you know. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, not giving up, you know. You, you might not necessarily have the right time yet to really push it, and then eventually, oh my! Now you have your opportunity. I'm not letting go, you know. Absolutely. It's not never too late. Absolutely, I completely agree. So um, I, I've heard his album, which you can find it online. Um, I know it's on Bandcamp, um, and it's really cool. I don't know what he's gonna sound like by himself, and I, I don't. I think that stuff is actually like ten years old. I, I'm under the impression of so. Um, but you know, I'm booking these shows, and I asked him if he thought he could draw out there, and he said that's kind of his people. Yeah. So, you know, he he gets on the bill and get, gets a chance to give it a try. And I've got a few other things that are coming up that he's going to be on. So, um, check him out, and we, we wish him the best. And so you guys are looking for a mystery? If you're looking for a surprise, he is a mystery. There we go. We're building a mystery, and we're doing it. Oh yeah, so careful. <laughs> then on February 29th, we have two shows. Um, FTMP presents. Uh, the band Ashford is releasing their EP Patterns. Um, also on the bill, we have Amateur Hockey Club, The Weather Might Say Otherwise, and Partners on Shanley. This is one of those times where I admit that I don't really know anything about any of the bands. Um, I've met the guys in Ashford. Um, I haven't actually had a chance to listen to the music myself yet, but we're going to play we're in a minute now, um, to be honest. Um, but I always like talking about release parties here. Yeah. They're super great guys. Um, I've, I, I've really enjoyed any time I deal with them. I've heard Amateur Hockey Club's really good, too. Um, the Weather Might Say Otherwise was one of our nominees for uh, Best New Band, um, and I don't know anything about Partners on Shanley, but, uh, you know, it's a great new band. They're putting out their debut. UEP, go check it out if you're looking for something new to do. And then also on the 29th, if that's not your thing, at Milky's, uh, it's a it is the Leap for Love Leap Day Party. Um, a bunch of kind of our more hot, positive hip hop acts are getting together and just putting together a nice positive show. Um, it's going to include Four Below, which um, includes uh, rapper Genesis, who's one of my f- favorite locals. Uh, they kind of have a boys to men vibe going. It's like gospel, soul, R&B, like, like, it's real pure. And then there's also an act named Bubblegum, who I'm not familiar with, and then we also have um, best hip-hop slash R&B performer Jay Aquarius on the bill, and uh, Mark Lee on the bill, and uh, Mark does um, some really, he does all sorts of really great work for the community, he does uh, mental health awareness fundraisers, he does stop bullying campaigns, him and Gen- Genesis actually go to us, schools and talk to children, um, and try to be a positive influence, so I, I always like to shine a light on that. So, um, yeah, those are the upcoming shows. All right, and next up, we are going to play the first song from uh, Ashford's EP Patterns. Uh, Here's Hypocrite, here on the Struggle is Real Buffalo Music Podcast on (laughs) allwny.com.
back here on the Struggle is Real Buffalo Music Podcast. That was Hypocrite by Ashford from their new EP Patterns, which uh, there is a release show on February 29th at Stamps. All right, folks. Well, that is all we have. I didn't even mention this. This was episode 50. Yay. That's an anniversary. Oh, my gosh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to applaud myself. We've been around as long as the Super Bowl. That's pretty cool. Like... And um, as long as I hit 50, like, I just want to mention my wonderful staff um, and even just some of the people who've helped that aren't helping anymore, like Nate Nwarda, Chandler Poswinski, and Dennis Reed, and then our staff, which is Will Webb, who is positively the best producer ever, and Kevin Kaufman now, and John Galbo, and Cassidy Dwan, and Danielle McCartney, and Jessica Squara, and, oh, God, um, Mike Sid, who helped out for a little while, and, oh, man, I know I'm missing someone, uh, Eleni, who's been on a couple episodes, and... And there's just been so many people, and it's just it really is like like I can't do this by myself the same way the scene and bands can't do anything by themselves. We need to work together, and that's how we make all the cool stuff happen. Thanks for tuning in again, um, for Kevin Kaufman. The struggle is real, and so is the ice. <laughs> and I'm Ryan Garnett. The scene is chaos. Please be kind to everybody. Thanks, and keep on struggling. Yeah.